Hey, hello guys. Hello. I hope you are able to hear me and see me well. All right. All right. I see 11 people attending already. 12 people. We're getting more and more. That's a pretty good thing. All right. Great. Great. I'm so happy to see you all here, guys. All right. 14 people already and we're, we're getting more. It's going to be a busy, busy webinar session this time, which I'm pretty happy about. So, all right, let's give some time to people to join. Uh, in the meantime, uh, yeah, in the meantime, what do I have for you? Let me think about it. Uh, yeah, of course. A uh, couple weeks ago, we launched a giveaway for $2,000. So whoever wins that giveaway for $2,000 is going to receive 2000 American dollar in a forex trading account. So this is this is the beauty of that uh, giveaway. $2000 real money in an Axie Trader account whoever wins the giveaway. So simply go to www.forexbolt.com/giveaway and start completing some of the entries and this is what is going to increase your chance of winning the $2000 giveaway. Yep, that's the thing. Uh, the best thing is that we have entries that are, you are able to complete on a daily basis, uh, meaning uh, that if you come back every day and complete more and more entries, uh, you will be able to increase your chance of winning. Uh, so I see a question here. Allow us to record, please. Guys, this webinar is being recorded. so. All people that are on the trader membership plan is going to have access to the recording of the webinar. By the way, I wanted to ask you, are you able to hear me and see me well? If yes, simply type in in the question section, hey, Damien, we're able to hear you and see you. So this way I will know that everything runs smoothly with our webinar. All right. I see yes from Daniel. Thank you very much, Daniel. Let me open this question section here to the side. All right. Oh, okay. Kyriakos, Daniel, Frank, Robin. Nice to see you all, guys. Thank you very much for attending this webinar. It is a pleasure for me to conduct it for you. Uh, so I saw, again, I repeat, uh, related to the question from uh, Yafet, I think that's the name. Uh, this webinar is being recorded and it's going to be uploaded at forexbolt.com slash webinar. So whoever is a member on the trader membership plan will have access to this webinar section session as well as every other webinar that we've done in the past as far as i uh, remember i think this is webinar number 38 yep the 38th webinar we're conducting and we're conducting two of these webinars every month so guys uh, uh you're supposed uh, all student and trader members are supposed to receive notification emails for this webinar uh so we will like remind you that the webinar is, is happening also whenever the recording is uploaded you will also receive notification all right oh so many people this time i'm so happy about that uh all right who else mark is here antonio uh antonio monreal sebastian kiriakos i i said his name already uh Yafet. also uh, Mark says, uh, hello from the UK. Hello from Bulgaria is what I say because I'm currently located in Bulgaria, the capital Sofia. And I see that, uh, uh, who, who's that? Kiriakou says, uh, how is the weather this time? <laughs> yeah, isn't that funny, right? <laughs> this time the weather is nice. I believe it's like pretty warm. It's like 15 degrees Celsius approximately, but we survived the big storms. <laughs> I remember that uh, the last webinar session I believe I conducted, I stretched a LAN cable from the router to my computer because the Wi-Fi signal was was not, uh, I mean, the whole internet connection was not good at all. So I wanted to like spare of the internet speed uh, as much as I can. So I stretched uh, like, a, say like a 20 meters LAN cable. I had a 20 meters LAN cable, you know? Roll like this, so I unrolled it and I stretched it to the to the office where I was broadcasting from. <laughs> so this is how I was able to conduct this webinar section. But it was like a big big disaster here with the weather. It was like minus 50, 15 degrees Celsius, 
very very windy and snowing a lot so i it took me like uh, one hour to dig out my car <laughs> so this is what the weather was today is very sunny and warm so all right guys so let's see 27 people already i'm very happy to see so many people on our webinar section session and i believe that since we're so many people it is already time to start let me think if i have something else for you uh yes yesterday we had a life analysis session some of you guys joined to this life analysis session in the tri private trading group which all traders and student members have access to uh so the replay of the life analysis session is in the group uh what else yeah yesterday was it yesterday or was it wednesday yeah on wednesday on wednesday we launched a brand new course on the website so currently we have 10 video courses on the website so this course is about japanese candlesticks uh and the name of the course is deep understanding of the japanese candlestick techniques so the course starts uh with some like brief history and some brief newbie stuff then the course transfers to candle patterns some a little bit more advanced candle patterns and uh, some trading strategies and so on and so forth the course is very very useful and i believe uh it is a very very a good move if all of you guys take this course uh, because it will give you a better picture of the technical analysis and how to interpret chart and price action so hey i see gerard weller says i have no sound uh gerard probably you have uh, probably you have an issue with your speaker why don't you uh go with your mouse if you're a, like a windows user go with your mouse to the bottom right corner of the screen uh, and right click the speaker you see then after you do this you can like uh, open uh, what was that uh, playback devices yeah you can open the playback devices and see if actually the sound is coming through the right device uh, on your computer and maybe this way you'll be able to fix the sound the other easiest thing that you can do is to try like to turn the volume off because this is like often uh, an issue maybe if you're using a battery speaker or something like the say uh, the jbl that i'm using but i'm like unable to show it to you currently uh since it is like uh charged like uh, like uh, with a usb cable when the power goes down i think that i have a problem with the sound like technical and actually it's only battery but uh yeah this is what i can tell you about your sound try to fix it oh and oh oh my god how stupid i am <laughs> he has no sound and i'm speaking yeah right uh all right anyway <laughs> i believe you'll be figuring it out otherwise you'll be able to watch the replay all right guys so now i suggest that we move to this <laughs> live webinar session oh, i'm still laughing about that <laughs> all right anyway uh all right let's let's move on let's move on let me clean out my screen now i am going to turn off my camera because i'm using two screens take a look because i'm currently looking at myself and whenever i'm moving the window where i see myself my face moves as well so don't don't bother if this is like strange so now i'm going to turn off my camera i'm gone and you're supposed to be only left with my sound so what i'm going to do now is uh to switch to our disclaimer and uh, guys i would like to ask you to spend like a minute to go through our disclaimer so you you know that we're 100 percent regulated company financially and legally and we hold an australian financial license to provide uh general advice and everything that you're going to hear in this webinar is only general advice and none of your personal situation has been taken into consideration and everything that you're going to hear is for educational purpose all right in the meantime i'm preparing my my slides getting everything ready i have like a clean visual on all the questions so whenever you guys have a question of any kind feel free to use the question section to ask your question and i would love i would love to respond to you of course 
All right, 34 people already. Pretty busy. Very, very busy today. I'm so happy to see these guys. I'm so happy to see more and more people of you. Uh, at the same time, I repeat again, this webinar is being recorded. So whoever is a member under the trader plan will have access to the webinar replay and the whole webinar database, of course. I already said about the, the new course that we uploaded on our website. So yeah, the giveaway. And the next time you're going to see my pretty face is going to be at the end of this webinar <laughs> eventually. And the next time for real, this is going to be the life analysis session that we're going to conduct during the next week. So all trader and student members have access to our life analysis sessions, to our private trading group where we conduct the life analysis sessions. So you're able to attend these guys. So yeah, the life analysis session is probably going to be either on uh, maybe on Friday. Usually I conduct this on Friday, but maybe I might do it earlier. Uh, anyway, you're going to see the event scheduled in our private trading group, so you'll be able to attend this life analysis session. All right, so now let's move to our webinar. So what is our webinar going to be today about, right? Probably you saw in the notification email. Otherwise, how did you register, guys? So it is going to be about the MACD indicator, also known as the MACD or the Moving Average Conversions Divergence Indicators. So I named this webinar MACD, one of the best indicators in Forex trading. Why so? You're going to see in this webinar. So the plan of the today's webinar, we're going to start with what is MACD or MACD and what is the history of this indicator. Then we're going to move to the structure of the moving average convergence divergence indicator, what it consists of. We're going to go through the MACD line the signal line, as well as the histogram of the indicator. Then we're going to go through the signals that the moving average convergence divergence indicator can give you, uh, like the, the most popular signals, not so popular signals, and signals that some of, some people even don't, don't know about, uh, which are the crossover, the divergence, and the overbought and oversold signal. Are you surprised? Maybe you are because not many people know that the moving average conversion divergence can be used for overbought and oversold conditions of the market. Uh, however, you will see why is this like signal method not very popular. Then we're going to switch to some practical examples. Then we're going to discuss some strategies and we're going to move to another practical example section. And then we're going to finish with questions and answers uh, session. All right, guys, so now let's move to our webinar. First, what is the MACD, MACD? So as I already said, MACD or MACD stays for Moving Average Convergence Divergence. And as I said, people call it either MACD or MACD. Uh, honestly, I use both <laughs> depending on the on the on how good my day was. <laughs> But uh, usually I use MACD, but today I'm using MACD. So personally for me, I use both of the names. So now, what is the MACD used about? Oh, I forgot something. So the MACD is based on moving averages and more specifically on exponential moving averages. And since I'm going to go in details through the moving averages that the MACDs rely on, uh, I will share more of this information with you a little bit later in the webinar. So what is the MACD used for? It is used to determine, first, the trend direction. Second, the momentum of the trend or how strong this trend is. And third, eventual potential reversals. I mean, different traders use it for many other different things. But honestly, these are the three main functions of this forex indicator the moving average convergence divergence now let's speak a little history the indicator was developed for technical analysis of stocks and its inventor is gerald apple the creation of this indicator was in i think 1970 yeah i mean i have it written down here but yeah 1970 and this is how Gerald Apple looks like. Uh, I believe, by the way, later on, but this is like a, 
a personal information that I have that uh, later on, maybe in 1980 something, another guy worked on the indicator and eventually approved it. However, I'm not sure what the name of this guy was. So I'm sharing only the basic uh, information with you guys currently. Now, let's move to the structure of the MACD indicator and why it is also known as MACD 12, 26, and 9. All right, so 12, 26, 9. Why is it called that way? I'll tell you, because these are the default parameters of this indicator. But since, I mean, when I say default parameter, this might sound complicated to some of you, because we also have some guys that are not that experienced. Over here, I'm going to give you some more details about these parameters, 12, 26, 9. So first, we start with the MACD line, because the MACD indicator contains three basic components. The most important one is the MACD line. So what is this line uh, built from? The most important thing that you need to remember is that the MACD line is not a single mo uh, exponential moving average or a simple moving average or whatever. Because many people think that the MACD line is simply an exponential moving average of the price. That is not true. And now I'm going to show you the MACD line calculation. So the truth is that the MACD line calculation uh, consists of extracting a 26 moving average from a 12 period moving average. So exponential moving average is what I'm saying. So EMA 12 minus EMA 26 is giving you the MACD line. So 12 period moving average, 12 period exponential moving average minus 26 period exponential moving average is what is giving you the MACD line and not a single exponential moving average. So the difference between these two in uh, these two uh, exponential moving averages is actually what is giving you the MACD line. So take a look, EMA 12, EMA 26. Do you notice something? Take a look at the title, 12, 26. This is where the first two uh, numbers from the default parameters of the indicators come from. And now I'm gonna show you about the third parameter, which is related to the second line of the MACD indicator. And this is the signal line. Signal line is pretty simple. The signal line takes the parameters of the MACD line, the previous line, and simply plots an exponential moving average on that line. And there you go. Calculation is simple. Actually, there is no calculation behind this. Simply, uh, the signal line is the MACD line smoothed by a nine period exponential moving average. Isn't that simple, right? All right, so now let's move to the next component of the MACD indicator, which is the histogram. So you probably know how a MACD histogram looks like. And in the next slide, you're going you're gonna to see like a, a real MACD plot of a chart. So the histogram of the MACD indicator simply represents the visual difference between the MACD line and the signal line. So... There you go, the difference between the two lines. And the official calculation of the histogram is like this. MACD line uh, subtracting the signal line from the MACD line. So this is how it looks like. Uh, the thing is that the bigger the histogram gets, the bigger the difference between the two lines are. Meaning that the MACD, since the MACD line is faster, it is normal that uh, the signal line shows some lack because the signal line actually is moving the MACD line, which is where the distance between the two lines come from. And all these three components are plotted on an area around a zero level, a zero line. Now, with the next slide, I'm going to show you how a MACD indicator looks like. So here, I have a random chart that I screenshotted, and I simply plotted on that chart a MACD indicator. Yep, take a look. This at the bottom is the MACD indicator. So the blue line is the MACD line, the faster line, the MACD line. The red line 
is the signal line, which is the nine period exponential moving average of the MACD line. So simply the red line smooths the blue line by a nine period exponential moving average. And the histogram, you're able to see it in this green rectangle at the bottom left corner of the chart. So this is how the MACD indicator looks like. By the way, notice that the indicator you're currently looking at, I personally found it myself on the internet because uh, the, the default MetaTrader 4 platform has a built-in MACD, uh, MACD indicator, which consists of only one line and has no second line. It cannot be edited and so on and so forth. So how I decided to do this webinar, because many people were asking me, hey, Damien, can you give us a two-line MACD indicator, please? And I simply uploaded it in the group. So many people liked that post. And I decided, hey, let's do a webinar about the MACD. Maybe a lot of people are interested in the MACD. So this is how I decided to do, <laughs> uh, to do a webinar about the MACD indicator. And also, guys, if you would like to download this MACD indicator you're currently looking at, simply go to our private trading group uh, and uh, why don't you do a search in the group for MACD, MACD, or simply write Damien, and you're going to see my most recent uploads, and you will be able to download that indicator. Pretty simple, right? And then you simply go to the data folder of uh, your MetaTrader 4 platform. You put the files over there. You turn off your MetaTrader 4 platform, turn it on again, and then you'll be able to, to use this indicator yourself. Now, let's move again to our webinar by the way guys i would like to encourage you if you have any questions do not hesitate to use the question section to write your question i would love to give you an answer and now let's move now what are the basic macd signals some more popular signals and some not that popular signals so first i will start with the macd crossover the line crossover of the macd indicator why do i start with this signal because this is the most popular macd signal known so the signal simply appears when the macd crosses the signal line since the signal line is the slower line the macd line like pretty often like crosses it so we have a bullish crossover when the macd line breaks the signal line in bullish direction or upward and we have a bearish crossover whenever the MACD line breaks the signal line downward, which is a bearish crossover in bearish direction. So the bullish crossover is uh, likely to be interpreted as a bullish signal and the bearish crossover is likely to be interpreted as a bearish signal. You're going to see how this works in the practical example that come with the next slide. Then the MACD divergence when the indicator and the price action actually divert so of course there are like two types of divergence with uh with the macd indicator two types of basic types of divergence which are the bullish divergence where the price creates lower lows while the macd lines create higher lows meaning that the price is basically the bottoms of the price are basically decreasing while the bottoms of the macd are actually increasing this is a bullish divergence which is likely to be interpreted as a bullish signal then comes the bearish divergence where the price creates higher highs while the macd does lower highs meaning that the price the price's tops are increasing while the macd stops are actually decreasing this is a bearish divergence and it is likely to be interpreted as a bearish signal then comes the next signal overbought and oversold market conditions with the macd indicator probably some of you are surprised and didn't know that the macd could be used as uh to determine overbought and oversold market conditions uh yeah i mean not very people are familiar with this and you're gonna see why is that first let me tell you what is an overbought market with the macd when the market is overbought actually no let me paraphrase this when you see a dramatic increase of the macd line versus the signal line or said with other words when there is a very very big 
uh, bullish bar on the histogram of the MACD, meaning that the two lines are very distant in bullish direction, this is considered as an overbought condition. Why so? Because there is a dramatic price increase, which is pretty unusual, which signalizes that the price may soon get back to normal. So since you have an overbought market, this is likely to be interpreted as a bearish signal because the price can get back to normal, creating like a like a, like a decent drop. It is same about the oversold price conditions, however, in the opposite direction. When you see a dramatic decrease of the MACD line versus the signal line, then this might be a signal for an oversold market, meaning that you are very likely to be seeing a big uh, bearish histogram bar on the MACD indicator. This is usually to be visually seen by seeing that big distance between the MACD line and the signal line where the MACD line is below the signal line. This is where the oversold market condition, uh, this is how the oversold market condition is likely to be like hinted by the MACD indicator. But the truth is that this is not very reliable signal. So this should definitely, uh, this should definitely not be traded as like a signal, uh, as a single signal with the MACD indicator. Always confirm these divergences, uh, actually these overbought and oversold market conditions with, uh, with another indicator because uh, they do not prove to be very reliable and they give many, many errors. All right, so now I suggest if you guys have no questions, I suggest that we switch to some practical examples where I will simply pop up my chart my MetaTrader 4 platform, and uh, we're going to try to discover some conditions with the MACD indicator. So there you go. Can we also see it visually is what um, Koso Lionel says. Yes, this is why I'm popping up my chart. I'm simply popping up uh, a standard chart, nothing more, a standard chart, random broker, nothing, nothing special at all. Uh, all right, and now I'm going to insert the MACD indicator. Notice that I go to custom because this is where I hold my custom indicators as every MetaTrader 4 platform. And as I said, this is a custom indicator that was applied manually uh, by me in my MetaTrader 4 platform because the usual MACD indicator of the MetaTrader 4 platform is with one line. So this is what the MACD indicator is about. So this is the four hour chart of the Australian dollar, Canadian dollar. Actually, guys, if you would like to, uh, Mark says, I use trending view. Well, yeah, uh, probably you're talking about trading view. Uh, yeah, totally. Trading view could also be used. However, I, I prefer using MetaTrader 4 because uh, our matter and our courses uh, are basically on MetaTrader 4. And while using MetaTrader 4, you're actually uh, uh, learning other valuable information. For example, how to apply the MACD like on your chart and so on and so forth. So guys, what I can suggest to you now, if you want simply write down a random Forex pair and I will simply plot uh, a MACD indicator of that Forex pair and I will try to do something like a, like a brief overview of uh, of the signals. In the meantime, why when you or while you are actually suggesting the forex pair that you would like me to turn on, uh, I see I see a divergence over here. Uh, for example, this is a bullish divergence. Take a look. All right, Nick uh, Koso says uh, American dollar Japanese yen. Frank says Canadian dollar Japanese yen. So I'm going to start with the American dollar Japanese yen. And with the second practical example session, I'm going to switch to the Canadian dollar Japanese yen. Thank you very much, guys, for suggesting this. But take a look at this divergence. See, the bottoms of the MACD indicator are, uh, the bottoms of the price action are decreasing. In the meantime, the bottoms of the MACD indicator are increasing. And what is the result? A sharp price increase. There you go. So this could be traded pretty easily. You know, for example, you, you discover the divergence. You use this crossover right over here as a trigger of your trade, which can put you with a trade somewhere over here. 
and then you can simply tackle this situation with a stop loss order below say the lowest point on the chart which is right over here and then you can trade this as long as the macd line is above the other line notice that the exit signal comes pretty pretty early over here so this is very likely to be a say uh maybe a losing trade or a zero zero trade however this sharp move probably was done by some economic event related to the australian dollar or the canadian dollar which means that you should have closed your trade a little bit earlier which puts you uh with eventual profit of say like 80 pips something like that because this is the four hour chart of the australian dollar canadian dollar now let's see let's switch to the american dollar japanese yen notice that i'm not going to open this one over here because this these are the ones i'm using for the live analysis session so they're like pretty colorful uh i will simply oh, all right i have it white here with some moving averages so what i can do is simply load my template there you go my black and beautiful template now i'm going to insert the macd indicator going to custom macd there you go all right now let's let's go to say one hour chart and let's try to look for some signals i mean the crossover is pretty straightforward although the crossover is not very reliable it gives a lot of errors but it is pretty pretty straightforward take a look uh you get a crossover over here price decreases then you get another crossover price decreases then you get another crossover the price increases in, in some way however take a look at this there is a crossover over here the price increases however the contrary signal comes over here meaning that your trade will be losing uh let's try another one take a look another crossover over here price increases bearish crossover price decreases right uh there is kind of a tricky situation over here bullish crossover probably caused by a, like a like a sharp price uh some kind of economic release or whatever but take a look isn't this like a bullish over uh isn't this like an overbought signal i'm gonna zoom in the chart take a look as you're seeing there is a very very big distance between the macd line and the signal line which means that the, this is like a bullish divergence uh actually not bullish divergence but a but an overbought market oh my gosh i'm con confusing this with my speech so this could be considered as an overbought market condition take a look very very big histogram bar and another big histogram bar so this is likely to be interpreted as a short signal take a look so if you have shorted the market over here you could have stayed in the market with a very nice trade until the macd lines cross back over here now let's see how much is this wow this is approximately 190 pips probably yep 190 pips with the american dollar japanese yen forex pair take a look here the market is pretty flat so the macd is giving us controversial signals a crossover but volatility is low crossover volatility is uh, i mean volumes are low in volatility another crossover another crossover volumes are probably increasing over here market start trending then another crossover another crossover and so on and so forth then you get another adequate crossover over here when the price is uh, increasing the thing is that whenever the market is quiet these signals are not very relevant and not very good to be used but this is actually enforced for every indicator isn't it because when the market is quiet it is moving sideways let's go to a 30 minute chart and distinguish some quiet market from some trending market take a look here we see a bearish crossover price decreases we see a bullish crossover price increases suddenly the market becomes quiet and price starts consolidating this is a sideways move this is a rectangle chart pattern take a look tops bottoms and whatever for this reason the macd indicator is giving us controversial signals take a look uh, bearish crossover, bullish crossover, bearish crossover, bullish crossover. Nothing specifically happens over here because the market is consolidating. Now let's try to discover a divergence. Let's let's zoom out. Uh, hmm. Ah, there you go. That's a divergence on the 30-minute chart. Take a look. 
and this is a bearish divergence. See, the price creates higher highs over here, and at the same time, the MACD indicator creates lower highs. There you go. So the tops of the price action are increasing, the tops of the MACD indicator are decreasing. So this is a bearish divergence, which is very likely uh, to lead to a price drop. Take a look. And you can use the bearish crossover of the MACD to enter your trade. So you can pretty much enter somewhere over here and stay in the market until lines cross back again. So this is approximately the profit from eventual trade, about 30 pips with the American dollar Japanese. Yen. However, notice that this is like for 20 periods, 20, 30 minutes period. So this is like a pretty decent profit for this for uh, this time frame. Let's try to discover something else now. Uh, <laughs> maybe another divergence we'll be able to find. That's an interesting situation. This is a divergence indeed, in my opinion. Take a look. Tops are increasing. While tops of the MACD indicator are actually decreasing. Take a look. Divergence. And generally, the price creates the drop. However, it creates like a fake move first, which is likely to put you in the market with a losing trade. So you need to stay tuned for this. Because notice that the MACD lines cross over here in bearish direction. However, there is no sufficient drop over here that could be actually actually traded. Take a look. And then the price, the MACD lines are decreasing, but the price is still increasing. And then you see a bullish crossover over here. So if you examine the MACD state carefully and you practice this a lot, you will get used to the different situations that the MACD indicator can put you with. Another divergence over here, however, is pretty small, but let me mark it. Take a look. This is when the MACD tops are decreasing and the price stops are increasing, which is another bearish divergence. And it leads to a small price drop, which maybe on the 15 minute chart is going to be seen in a better way. Let's check that out. Let's zoom out. Actually, I lost where I where I drew my stuff, which is not a good thing. <laughs> anyway, I'm currently scrolling desperately through my chart because I lost where I was plotting stuff on my MACD indicator. All right, anyway, I think I lost it. <laughs> I think I lost it. I'm going to find another example for you now. Uh, yeah, right. Anyway, so now let's zoom in that chart and see what else do we have. Uh, let's zoom, let's move to nowadays. So this is the 30 minute chart. First, take a look bearish MACD crossover. Price starts trending in bearish direction. Suddenly, we see another crossover over here, which could be used as an exit signal. The opposite thing we have over here, bullish crossover, price is trending. Notice that the MACD line tries to break the signal line, but it bounces from it and gets broken over here. So this is the basic MACD signal, the crossover. Another good, good, very good signal with the MACD indicator is the divergence. Is this a dive? Oh, what did I do? Uh, I switched to another chart. Did I just close my own chart? Or maybe I simply moved it somewhere. Let me try to find it. This is the thing I slightly don't like about MetroTrader. It, it does crazy things from time to time. But uh, anyway, so what I'm going to do now, take a look. I'm going to open my market watch and I'm going to open uh, the American dollar Japanese yen again. There you go. Chart window, closing the market watch, switching to the right. All right, template, low template, there you go. All set again. So having in mind, ah, there you go. So I was speaking about this price increase and then this price decrease prior that. So now let me scroll a little bit more and try to find another signal. Oh, this is the one hour chart. Let's try the 30 minute chart. 
yeah i think i was speaking about uh no that's not a divergence this might be interpreted as a divergence take a look. price is decreasing maybe we can disregard this bottom price is decreasing while the macd not sure if it's increasing but it is like almost i mean it is increasing but it's very very slightly the bottoms are kind of increasing so this is another signal that the flat market could be turned into a bullish move and this is exactly what happens take a look price increases all right i believe i covered many many signals if you have any questions guys feel free to ask in the meantime i'm going to switch to the next slide i have for you which is about matching strategies with the macd so the thing that i'm going to start with uh is to explain what i mean with saying matching strategies this is something that i created with my own thought saying matching strategies this word because i like to call it that way matching meaning to match signals with different indicators and although the macd indicator is it's not a bad standalone tool, meaning that it could be used profitably like with uh, using only that indicator. Still, if you combine it with another indicator, it might prove uh, to have like very, very good results. Why would you do this? In order to confirm the signals that you're getting with the MACD indicator. So let's start. The first indicator that I can suggest you can use with the MACD is the stochastic oscillator so uh how can you use this uh jared asks so how do we trade the macd in metatrader for them uh well if you want to trade with the macd on metatrader 4 if you want to trade with the same macd that i'm using you need to download it first from our private trading group add it to your metatrader 4 platform and then simply base your trades on the signals that you think the indicator is giving you. So actually the decisions are your own choice. However, it all depends on how you're going to interpret the MACD indicator. I'm just giving you hints about these signals like the crossover, the divergence, uh, and eventually the overbought and the oversold condition. All right, so how could the MACD be used with the stochastic oscillator? With matching signals, right? so first thing is that you can open your trades whenever you see a signal from both indicator for example you match a, a, a macd crossover with an uh, say an oversold condition of the stochastic oscillator you you match a bullish divergence with an oversold condition you can like open trade based on these two signals then when you open your trade you will definitely need to protect your trade in order to Keep your bankroll safe, right? So this could be used, this could be done with a simple stop loss order placed beyond a visual top or a bottom on the chart. Because, for example, when you have a divergence, you always have a, a, a like a clear visual edge on the chart that you can use to position your stop loss order. And uh, then you are close, you can close your trades on getting signals only from the MACD indicator because for example the stochastic oscillator is like pretty fluctuating indicator you know uh and it is constantly giving you overbought and oversold conditions so in order to hold a trade a little bit longer and not to miss any emerging trends you might want to uh, uh you might want to disregard the stochastic oscillator when you're closing your trades now let me switch to the second indicator i have for you which is the momentum indicator. The momentum indicator, uh, in my opinion, is a good match, another good match for the, for the MACD indicator. And the reason for this is that the momentum indicator is of course used to like to determine market momentum and which is one of the features of the MACD indicator. So these are another good couple. The momentum with the MACD indicator, although I personally prefer the previous example, but anyway, I'm going through this one as well. So what are we doing? We can still open on signals from both indicators as we were about to do with the stochastic oscillator. Again, the stop loss comes beyond, beyond the visual edge and we're closing on MACD signals as well. So pretty much the two strategies are used the absolutely the same way. However, the secondary indicator that we're using to confirm the MACD signals is used 
only for opening trades and not for closing trades. And the reason for this is that the secondary indicators are a little bit volatile and fluctuating a lot. So it is not relevant to use them to close trades because uh, uh, this will prevent us from catching an emerging trade, uh, an emerging trend. And now I'm going to switch to another practical examples session for you guys. And I'm going to approach this time the Canadian dollar Japanese yen as suggested by Frank Plus uh, to base uh, my indicators on it. Uh, oops, sorry about that. <laughs> I was supposed to pop up my chart. There you go. And I'm going to switch to the yeah Canadian dollar Japanese yen. So let's go to the market watch. There you go, Canadian dollar, Japanese yen chart window, closing the market watch, inserting my template. There you go. All right, so now let's put the MACD indicator. And now let's put the stochastic indicator as well. Indicators, the stochastic oscillator. There you go. All right. So basically, the stochastic oscillator is telling us when the market is overbought and oversold. It has very simple rules. I mean, standard uh, standard default stochastic oscillator is using the, the areas between 80 and 100 for overbought zone and between 20 and 0 for oversold zone. So now we're going to try to match signals. Stochastic oscillator can give us overbought, oversold signals as well as diversion signals. So this is what we're hunting for. The three signals from the MACD as well as the signals from the stochastic oscillator. So we're starting, say that, what's that? Let's do the 30 minute chart of the Canadian dollar Japanese. Yen. All right, so uh, what are we having here? Take a look. We have a bearish crossover, which is a sales signal from the MACD. And at the same time, we have an overbought condition from the stochastic oscillator. So we can pretty much sell somewhere over here when the MACD lines actually cross in bearish, in bearish direction because this is what gives us the two bearish signals. And we can trade until the MACD lines cross back somewhere over here. Although this is not that good of a trade, it is still, it is still profitable trade giving us something like uh, 10, 11 pips of profit. Now let's check a previous condition. Uh, the previous MACD signal comes over here with a bullish crossover. And at the same time, the stochastic oscillator is giving us a bullish, uh, an oversold market, which is another bullish signal. So this means we can buy the market over here and we can stay in the market until the MACD lines cross, which is very likely to be a losing trade or at least a, like a, a break even trade and nothing more because the 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 signal of the MACD comes a little bit early but we cannot be like 100% accurate every time which is the reason why <laughs> there are a lot of losing forex traders you know so let's switch to another signal uh let me show you yeah we have a match over here uh we also have a match over here however the the stochastic lines go yeah this could be used as well in my opinion but it is a little bit controversial this is going to be another zero trade take a look because the the crossover of the MACD I think it comes here I see a little you see take a look a little crossover over here which is eventually a bearish a bearish signal so this is a little bit of a losing trade slightly losing trade but this could be used for a good trade take a look an oversold market comes with the stochastic over here and then the MACD lines cross in bullish direction. So the market could be bought over here and could be held until we see the crossover with the MACD lines, which is 70 something pips over here. That's a good trade. Now, let's see if we're able to find something like a divergence with some of the two indicators. Uh, I am currently approaching the tops of the price action uh no trying to find something like a divergence to show you another example 
All right, this is a good this is a good swing that could be caught in both directions. Take a look. Matching signal comes with the MACD lines over here and with the stochastic going outside of the oversold zone. So this is another move that could be catched. Take a look. 40 pips, another one. And then the opposite thing happens right over here. We see the bearish crossover and the stochastic oscillator exiting the overbought area. Take a look. So if you if you if you've sold here, then the exit signal according to the strategy I'm approaching comes somewhere over here, which is 105 pips approximately. All right, let's now try to find a divergence because this is what I'm looking for currently. Probably there are many, but since I have two indicators, I might be missing something. Let's switch to a one hour chart. Uh, all right. Looking for this, looking. This one maybe? No, no, that's not a good one. All right. Yeah, take a look at this. Yeah, I think this could be considered as diversion because price action tops are pretty much increasing. At the same time, MACD lines are slightly decreasing. And you're not able to see the decrease because comparing to the tight market over here and this big bottom the macd indicator is pretty squeezed so when i stretch it up you see that the macd lines are, are really decreasing take a look the tops of the macd lines are really decreasing so this is a bearish divergence the signal comes here and at the same time we see the stochastic oscillator hitting the overbought area a lot suddenly the stochastic oscillator goes out of the oversold zone and the macd line does the same take a look so this could be traded uh notice that we have a clo a little close signal with the macd so worst case scenario you can hold your trade uh until here uh there you go something like that for something like 90 pips however if you believe that this is not enough of a signal for you then this will put you with a very very good trade in this case something like 280 pips for 40 for about 42 trading hours so this is how this strategy works with the stochastic oscillator now i'm going to remove the stochastic and i would oh i see a question from ricardo rodriguez can you show us a possible stop loss using that strategy of course of course i can uh and if it is my call, I would place my stop loss order here, of course, because I'm entering over here on the assumption that the price is likely to decrease. So if the price goes above its highest point, when I believe that we, I have a bearish divergence in an overbought market, I will definitely like to close my trade. So a stop loss order above this stop, in my opinion, is a good call maybe somewhere around 8960 something like that because it's a round number it might have a psychological factor so maybe actually no the psychological level is at 8950 there you go round number from the 50s level so i think 8960 is a, is a good call over here so in this case you are risking say uh 35 pips to gain eventually 250 pips which is like how much is this a lot <laughs> 35 to 250 is what i said let me open a calculator and let's calculate now uh, all right give me a second all right 35 pips divided by 250 pips equals to 0. Uh, one percent is what is your risk to is what is your risk compared to the profit you want to make over here 14 percent risk all right i see a couple other questions please can you go over once again what placing a stop loss uh what placing a stop loss beyond the visual edge means I, i'm saying a visual edge because i can say to place your stop loss order above a big top but if we are like uh if we are approaching the opposite situation is going to be a big bottom so saying a visual edge i mean 
a big bottom or a big top depending on the direction of your trade. In this case, the visual top, the big visual top is over here. Take a look because you're selling over here and you assume that the market's going to drop, meaning that you assume that this is going to be the end of the prices increase. So this is the visual top for you. Whenever you sell on the MACD line, like bearish crossover over here, somewhere over here, you already have this as a visual top. Uh, this was Andres. You're very welcome. Then Carl asked, what determines the entry point of this trade? Difference between MACD lines and signal line after the divergence. Uh, the example I'm using, I'm currently referring to spotting a divergence at the same time spotting an overbought market condition with the stochastic and using the bearish crossover of the MACD lines as a trigger. Take a look. Notice that the lines get like very, very distant over here. I mean, you cannot consider this or this or this as a trigger or even this or this because here you don't have a clear divergence yet. But here and here you have a clear divergence. However, the fluctuations are pretty small because take a look at the histogram. You see, histogram represents the difference between the two lines. And here, when you get this beautiful crossover, you see that the histogram grows significantly. You see? And here, already, this could be interpreted as an oversold market or uh, and could be interpreted as a, a, like a, a close for your entry. But if you decide that this is not enough of a signal, you can catch the whole trend. This depends on you. Uh, the thing is that, Honestly, you don't need the two, the two MACD lines, in my opinion. I mean, everything could be traded only with the histogram because histogram basically displays the state of the two lines and the difference between the two lines. So if the histogram is red, then the lines are, then the MACD line is below the signal line. If the histogram is green, then the MACD line is above the, the red line. So you can use the histogram as a visual basis to determine the strength. But take a look at this. Here, the red bars are not consistent when we see this fake, this fake bearish crossover. We have a small bar over here. Let me zoom. But if I zoom, I'm afraid I'm going to lose it again. This is 2nd February, 9 o'clock. Oh, all right, I'm not losing it. And let me zoom again. Take a look. Why is this not an adequate signal? Take a look. You have a small bearish bar over here which indicates that we have a crossover. Then we have one that is bigger, but then we have a second one that is like, meh, not that big. A third one that is big, but we have a fourth one that is not that big and another one that is smaller. And take a look what happens with the real crossover. We have another, we have one that is red, we have another that is same size, then we have a bigger one, then we have a bigger one, we have a bigger one, another bigger one, meaning that the two lines are gaining distance. You see? This is what distinguishes the valid signal from the from the fake signal uh, with the MACD indicator. And basically, I am referring to the bearish crossover as a trigger, having in mind the signals that I got, the bearish divergence and the overbought uh, market from the stochastic oscillator. So let me see. I have some more comments. uh what determines the entry point of this trade i already answered this question what is one of your favorite pairs to trade <laughs> uh well this strongly depends uh well i i like all, all the majors of course because majors are good to trade having in mind the spread if you're trading with a legitimate broker they're like ni nice pairs to trade as long as you, you like tackle them with a respective strategy. But pairs that I am very attracted to a lot and they need to be traded in a little bit different way. These are like uh, uh, other American dollar based pairs, but involved with uh, another forex, another currency that is like pretty confusing. For example, say the Russian ruble or the Turkish Lira, which I constantly talk about during my life analysis session, because there are a lot of political stuff going on in Russia currently, having in mind the situation that they have with the United Kingdom and the many countries that are supporting the United Kingdom, as well as the, 
the Tur as well as Turkey, where they have the Turkish lira, which is another a little bit politically confused country currently, because they had like the attempt for the COP a couple year couple years ago, supported by the the terrorist attacks conducted by the Kurd separatists in the country and the involvement of Turkey in the in the war in Syria. So these are like interesting factors. So if you combine some fundamental like data. <laughs> Uh, with your technical analysis, I believe this can prove to have like pretty decent results for you. Uh, all right. Let's check out because I'm losing a little bit track of the questions that I'm getting. Uh, what is one of your favorite price pairs to trade? Got it. Thanks. Is there a certain time frame that works better with these two indicators? uh well this is another thing that depends on your trading strategy but i would prefer to use this uh combination of indicators i would prefer to use it like a, not exactly intraday i mean i would prefer to use it intraday but it could also work on a, on like a trading few more days but i would prefer to use this on a maximum one hour chart this is my personal opinion because uh, during the day a forex pair is like trending and quiet trending and quiet so my goal will be to, to catch the trend during the day and having in mind that the stochastic oscillator is pretty fluctuating and in my opinion it's not that reliable on say like a daily chart i mean you know <laughs> stochastic is supposed to show you overbought and oversold conditions on like intraday in my opinion uh and not on a big chart so this I believe the bigger the biggest chart that it is more like reliable for is like the hourly chart. But you can also like do it on a 15 minute chart, 30 minute chart and support of course your trading decisions with smaller and bigger charts as well. Uh should I uh, so I should look for increasing bars is what Carl says. The increasing bars Carl actually represent the state of the two lines of the MACD indicator uh and the reason for this is that the histogram is actually giving you a visual basis of the difference between the two lines so you can either refer to the increasing bars or simply look carefully at the two lines and see if they're gaining distance from each other do you think these are good for scalping uh well yeah yeah i think this could be a good strategy for scalping uh i mean um as long as you close your trade intraday, it's still a scalping strategy, you know? Five minute chart is what Frank says. Yeah, well, I think yes, why not? Let's switch to a five minute chart, try to discover another another situation. There you go. You have a bearish crossover. Over here, you have like an overbought condition. You have a bearish crossover, price decrease comes, exit point comes right over here with the MAC dealings. Take a look. So this is what could be. And this is like just on first sight what I got. Take a look. Divergence is what I have here this is a bullish divergence there you go and this divergence is supported by another divergence from the stochastic so these are another two matching signals so you can pretty much buy over here and hold until you see the crossover over here so which responds to there you go what is this 48 pips all right now let's switch to the momentum indicator how is the momentum actually seeing this situation so i'm going to use absolutely the same rules but i'm going to apply a different indicator uh there you go momentum comes over here the signal of the momentum could be the divergence and could be the breakout through the 100 level right over here so let's scroll shuffle that chart <laughs> so we'll have like a random situation or something see how the momentum behaves uh looking for a relevant example take a look at this you see the momentum here is fluctuating be below the 100 level. Take a look. Here is the 100 level gets broken here. Let's see what the MACD is doing. The MACD is doing a crossover a little bit earlier. So you can buy the market after you get the two signal and hold until the MACD lines cross. There you go. Another bullish trend right over here. And at the same time, the visual edge that you're going to use for your stop loss order could be over here. The bottom, that comes pre-order. There you go. 
So this could be your stop loss level, this could be your entry level, and your close comes somewhere over here. So this is another that could be a profitable trade. Let's see how things work over here. Take a look. Bearish crossover comes over here. However, momentum is quiet. Then another bearish crossover comes here and the momentum breaks the 100 line in bearish direction. There you go. So this could be sold over here and held until the MAC lines cross over here. There you go. So this is another 80 pips right over here. So this is how it works. Oh, I think I got some more questions. All right. Well, I believe I managed to to explain to you guys what I have in mind with the MACD and the momentum indicator. And for this reason, now I'm going to switch to the questions and answers section. So feel free to uh, to ask me any questions that you have related to the webinar section session that we created. Also, I remind that this webinar is going to be uploaded in our website. So whoever is on the trader membership plan will have full access to this webinar replay all the time. And you can replay it uh, the many times you want. In the meantime, now feel free to ask me your questions. All right. Looking at the questions and the answer section. And I'm ready for you guys to answer if you have any questions. Feel free to address them now, and I would love to, to discuss a little bit more with you before I end this webinar session. I believe it is a pretty valuable session, having in mind that there are like many, many people. MACD indicator is always at 12, 26, 9 is what Frank says. Actually, Frank, these are the default parameters of the MACD indicator. You are free to modify this like at any time if you're using a custom indicator. So I can pretty much modify the parameters of my MACD indicator and it will show different values. And maybe this modification will have more positive results on different Forex pairs because, you know, some, some of the strategies work on one Forex pair, but they don't work on another Forex pair. How reliable is the MACD in cryptocurrencies? Uh -huh. Interesting question. Uh, depending on how reliable you believe the technical analysis is on cryptocurrencies because in both cases forex meaning uh, currencies standard currencies like the euro american dollar we're analyzing these technically using fast price behavior and we're using the macd indicator actually to analyze this fast price behavior and it is same about cryptocurrency if you believe that technical analysis on crypto has the same strength as the technical analysis on forex then the MACD indicator, uh, th then you are on the opinion that the MACD indicator is likely to have the same reliability on cryptocurrency. This is pretty subjective, and I'm speaking from third person because I cannot tell you uh, technical analysis is 100% successful on cryptocurrency. No, I cannot tell you this. A lot of people don't believe in technical analysis, and a lot of people that trade crypto haven't even heard of, te of technical analysis. You know, thank you for all professional wisdom have a great day oh thank you very much frank uh mark says use ema for crypto but may add macd well if you're using ema then the macd is simply like a more complicated way to use emas because the macd line is a difference between the ema 12 period and the ema 26 period so if you're using the ema on cryptocurrency then the macd might appear to be a better solution for you mark All right, let's check if I have some more questions scrolling over here. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask me. I would love to give you an adequate answer. Also, I would like to remind you that, uh, again, every week we're conducting uh, live analysis sessions on our private trading group that every trader and student member have access to. So once a week, I'm like online for one hour and I'm ready to answer your questions, guys. Uh, have you coded an EA using MACD and what is your experience? Honestly, I'm not a Forex programmer. I'm more of a technical analysis guy. I'm more of a price action guy. And uh, I haven't coded any indicators, but from time to time I find good indicators like the one I showed you, the, the MACD that I found in Google. 
uh, and I use them. Otherwise, I don't code robots. I'm 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 a manual trader. And again, guys, I would like to remind you that this indicator I was using, I I found it in Google. This indicator, honestly, and it is uploaded in our private trading group. So if you scroll down in our private trading group, you will be able to find that indicator and to download it. All right, let me turn on my camera now. And that's me back at you guys after a one hour life analysis session. So I hope you liked this life analysis session. Uh, again, I repeat the webinar is recorded. All the trader members will have access to the webinar recording in our webinar database. Also, I remind about the giveaway at www.forexvault.com slash giveaway. We're giving away 2000 American dollars for Forex trading to one winner. So the winner of this giveaway is going to receive these real 2000 American dollars in a real Forex trading account. All right. I see another question over here from Frank Plus. He says, is there a certain time frame that, oh, actually, this is an old question. I scrolled down. <laughs> uh, all right. And Kotso Lionel Dembu says, can one build algo based on MACD strategy? Well, I think so. Yes. Uh, this is how the MetaTrader platform is actually constructed to be able, uh, if you're able to express with a code, uh, whatever you are building, you are able to code this because uh, since indicators are custom, you simply need to know how to write your code. Uh, and yeah, if you're able to express that strategy in a code, I believe it's going to work. But maybe you will need to consult with a programmer about that. All right. I think that's it, guys. Thank you very much for uh, your time for attending this webinar. Oh, I see a hand raised over here. What is this? No, no hand raised. We're using the questions. All right, guys. Thank you very much for attending this webinar. It was a great pleasure for me to do it for you. My name is Damian from forexbolt.com. I wish you to have a great and a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye and see you next week. Bye-bye.